Hello, everybody, and welcome back for some weekly VR news. As always, I am Mateo 311, and this is your channel for everything VR related. This is an absolute hype episode that's all about new VR games. We just had plenty of great announcements from the VR gaming showcase, and I'm currently still riding a high from a recent in-person demo that I will be able to talk about in the near future. Now, there are, of course, links and timestamps if you want to skip ahead, but before we jump in, this video is brought to you by my sponsor, Kiwi Design. They currently make my favorite Quest to Elite strap, which comes in multiple different versions. You can add an extra battery pack, high quality headphones, or even both. They also have other products like Valve Index style hand straps, and they just introduced a brand new RGB stand. Your controllers and headset magnetically connect. There's a charging indicator, so you'll know when your headset's ready to go. And there's plenty of different RGB color options available. There's a link to Kiwi Design down in the description. And don't forget to use discount code Mateo311 for 5% off and to help support this channel. Okay, so let's start things off like normal with the check-in, and that's what have I been up to in the VR world? Well, if you guys follow me on social media, I just went on a secret trip and I can't talk about it yet, but let me tell you, the things I saw were just absolutely fantastic. We are in for a ride. The next few months of VR are going to be amazing. And I am leaving for GamesCon in just two days. So this is just a very quick trip home for me. I can't wait to start sharing stuff with you guys. It's a very exciting time. VR is going to pop off in the next few months. Honestly, there's some amazing announcements. I'm sorry to just tease you, but I'm under embargo for at least another week. You'll start seeing the things, but more importantly, you'll hear my firsthand impressions very soon. So just be hyped, guys. And that's pretty much what today's video is all about. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Unfortunately, there's no new releases officially dropping this week, at least on my list. Maybe something slipped in there that I missed, but we did get a ton of game announcements, so let's just start jumping into those. Starting off with an announcement that was not in the VR gaming showcase, we just found out that the mixed reality PvP shooter Spatial Ops is dropping this year. Now, this is coming from Resolution Games, one of my favorite studios, as they've previously released other titles like Demio, Demio Battles, Blast On, Angry Birds, Ultimax. You get it, they have tons of fantastic games. But jumping back to Spatial Ops, this game allows you to play with one to eight players, and utilize mixed reality to turn your real world space into an open battlefield. There's multiple different gameplay modes like deathmatch, capture the flag, and domination. So this is almost like having the ability to build your own little personal laser tag room. I'm absolutely pumped for this one and can't wait to try it out. Now, even if you watch the VR gaming showcase and you're familiar with everything they announced, because obviously, you know, you're going to get my opinion and maybe a little bit more inside information. Now, the first item that was really cool to see is that the original Arizona Sunshine is being remade with Arizona Sunshine 2 quality graphics. It's also including all of the DLC that they released over time. And if you own the original game, you can get the remake for only 10 bucks. Arizona Sunshine still holds up today. And now that it has 2024 quality graphics, it is a fantastic VR experience. So if you tried Arizona Sunshine 2 and just want more of that, or if you're looking for a great zombie shooter campaign, I highly recommend you pick this up when it releases. Arizona Sunshine was way ahead of its time when it originally released, and it's part of the reason why Vertigo Games is one of the original OG developers that are still in the game today. Now, if you're the type of person who jumps into VR just to have a good time and get the adrenaline pumping, well, then I gotta say, Action Hero looks pretty damn fun. It looks like a combination between super hot and an over-the-top, ridiculous, B-rated action movie probably starring Vin Diesel. Sure, it's most likely on the casual side, but it does look like an absolute blast. Now, we also got a glimpse at the two upcoming games from Combat Waffle, the studio that gave us Ghost of Tabor. Grim is your rust style game where you'll scavenge for resources, build up a shelter, some tools, and create yourself an arsenal, and usually consider everyone hostile even when they say they're friendly. Now, this survival title also has an atypical setting, as there's a bit of a space, desolate planet theme to it. Now, this isn't my go to genre, but I am definitely intrigued. Now, their next title, Silent North, excites me even more. This is a PvPVE title. You'll be trapped in the zombie-infested Swedish Alps, and as you can expect, survival is your top priority. Now, I absolutely love the direction they went with the graphics. It reminds me of a Telltale Games, The Walking Dead, and I have to say Combat Waffle knows how to deliver one hell of a trailer. So the survival game fans definitely have something to look forward to in the near future. Now, we also got a much deeper look at End Dream's upcoming PvP shooter, Frenzies. Now, I definitely enjoy what I'm seeing. The art style truly stands out, and it looks like it could be a lot of fun. And previously, I was confused about what sets this game apart, why I would choose it, 
it over any other PvP game, but the latest trailer explains why it has the name Frenzies. There's a really large array of unique gameplay modes, and the title will keep switching it up on you each round. So that's definitely a unique new twist, and I'm much more pumped about the game now. We also got a deeper look at the story-driven puzzle title, Escaping Wonderland. Now this is another title that I wasn't immediately sold on, and honestly not quite my style, but I have to admit it's looking really good. Graphically it looks quite beautiful and highly immersive, there's lots of unique characters to meet along the way, and hopefully it's filled with a compelling storyline and some clever puzzles. Now in the past I always turned my nose up at Moss, thought I wouldn't enjoy it, but once I finally did I absolutely fell in love, so who knows, maybe the same can happen with Escaping Wonderland. Now next up, I was really excited to see a new trailer for Into the Radius 2, and also get the official announcement that it's coming to the PlayStation VR 2. If you never played the original Into the Radius, it's just a top tier VR game, and one of the best VR horror survival games. The sequel plans to improve on everything the original game did, plus also add in a new co-op feature, so I'm absolutely pumped for this game. It's currently in early access on PC right now if you want to check it out, but generally I prefer to wait until it's much further down the road in development. And we also got another really cool surprise, and that's the fact that the absolutely fantastic shooter Fract is making its way to Quest. Now I've played through this game on both the original PlayStation VR and PC VR, absolutely loved it. It's just a high action shooter, something once again like a Vin Diesel action movie. You'll be hanging from cliffs, fighting enemies while skiing downhill, and pretty much just mowing down hordes of creatures. It's basically some mindless fun, and I'm really happy that questers will now get to experience it. There was also another action-packed game called Vendetta Forever. Similar to Action Hero, this appears to be more on the casual side, and just all about fast-paced combat. It did once again remind me a bit of Super Hot, but there's a really unique locomotion element here where you'll kill an enemy and then kind of punch your way and retrieve their weapon and then continue that series to take down enemy after enemy. So once again, this just looks like a really fun title to get into. And finally, we got to see the games that the Flat the VR Studio are working on, and I have to say I'm extremely excited here. Now, the rest of this video is pretty much a recap of the VR gaming showcase, but before we get into that, I do have a few other topics to discuss. And the first one is a new feature that Meta announced, which is HDMI input. Now, I actually already got to sample this, you know, tried it out, and I even asked the question, well, what is this for? What was the intended use case? And Meta basically just said that they like to give their engineers some space, let them try new things, and that this was actually a requested feature. But in practice, I don't know. I don't understand the use case. So to break it down for you guys, you can get a HDMI capture card, which is pretty much just a dongle. It's gonna have an HDMI in, USB-C, plug it into your headset, and then you could take any HDMI input, plug it in, open an app from inside your Quest, and view what's being ran through. I feel like there are better solutions out there for this. Like if you wanted this option. Now, if you have a quest, it's great to have new features, but something like the X-Rail glasses just work way better for this. You don't have to buy a capture card. There's no HDMI adapters needed. It's just, it seems like an overall headache to me. Additionally, people are like, well, I want to do screen input, but it's not mirroring your screen. It's, you know, commandeering your screen because you'd have to unplug the HDMI from your monitor and then plug it into your headset. It's a niche use case. I think some people will find a reason to use it. Someone mentioned to me, hey, why don't you plug a Google, you know, Chromecast stick in there or, you know, some type of dongle like that. And I'm like, okay, but now the dongle needs external power because it won't be able to get power from the USB port because it's using this capture card adapter. So now you need extra power. So you need a dongle, a quest, an adapter, and, and external power. You end up with four pieces. Like I said, most of these things can be solved with either software or there's other better hardware solutions out there. So for me, I'm left scratching my head. I feel down the road on a future more streamlined headset. This will be a lot more useful. There'll be more use cases for it. But as it stands right now, I'm just like, oh, you did a thing. And it's a pretty cool thing that you did. But who's using this and why? And when they don't have an answer, you know, I get a little curious on that. But that was a ramble. Let's get back to the game. Now, the three games that were announced by the Flat the VR Studio include Flat Out, Wrath, Aeon of Ruin, and RoboQuest. Now, just glimpsing all three of those titles, they immediately look better than the stuff you generally get from VR. 
Now, maybe you might pause at that statement when you look at Aeon, but that is actually a brand new game, but it's a boomer shooter. So it's supposed to have that old school look. And I have played through it on flat screen and it's very solid. So I'm really excited to jump into it in a VR world. Now, flat out looks like it's just going to be a super badass racing game where we're crashing into each other and having a blast. We haven't gotten a good VR racing game in forever besides GT7, which is only on the PlayStation VR 2. So I'm definitely pumped for this game because not only does it look beautiful, but the action looks super intense. And finally, RoboQuest, I'm not really familiar with, but it does look like a very fun and very solid shooter. So overall, this is a great start for the Flat the VR Game Studio. I hope these titles deliver and I'm really looking forward to their future. And that was today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Honestly, I'm super pumped about VR. There's going to be a ton of things for me to talk about. I'm actually most likely going to demo a lot of these games that I'm talking about right now. Um, I'm going to demo them in a few days at Gamescom. I will have a report on that. I have a big video releasing on the 27th. Lots of stuff, guys. Super pumped. If you're happy like me, let me know down in the comments. And I'll see you guys on next time.